This demonstration will take you through the steps to render an image of your object in Rhino. Here I'll be using the Mac version. The Windows version will be similar, but not exactly the same. The first thing we're going to do is set our viewport to the render view. This will help us see what changes are happening as we go. Next, I'm going to look in the render menu to look at the various options that we have. First, I'll look at the render properties and make some adjustments. The resolution, I'll keep fairly low, but you can go a little bit higher for the outputs that you create. For now, we'll keep it at draft quality, but that will go higher once you do your final output. Pay attention to the different backgrounds, and in particular, the ground plane. Here I'm going to set the ground plane. We can adjust the height and have it sitting just below the object. If it's done properly automatically, that's okay too. We can also adjust the material that the object will be sitting on. Here I'll be setting it to plastic. Also note that you have other options, and in particular, you can use a picture accessing a JPEG of your choice. The lighting we'll use is mainly the skylight, but in certain cases you'll want to do it in different ways. We'll leave it at that for now. After adjusting the properties, I'll start to create materials. In the panels, I'm going to click on the materials tab. This will act as a palette where we can create a bunch of different materials and then assign them to the object. We already have the plastic in place, that's the material on the ground plane, and we can see the reflection created. To add a new material, just click on the plus sign. First, I'll add a paint material. This will be the yellow paint for the main body of the pencil. I can adjust the color. Once you've created the material, we can now assign it in a few different ways. Once you've created the material, we can now assign it to the objects. We can do that in a few different ways. Here, I'll just drag and drop it onto the object itself. When it's highlighted, let go. Now we can see that the paint has been applied. I'll continue adding a couple of other materials for the rest of the pencil, and then we'll work further on the other side. Here I'll add from the material library. Rhino has an extensive number of materials that you can access in all kinds of different categories. I'll be using the satin aluminum for the metal clip that holds the eraser. Drag and drop to assign. This time I'll add a custom material. For the eraser, I'm gonna choose a pink color. We can look at some of our further options. This needs to be fairly matte, so I'll leave it as is. I'll zoom in to the text. For this, we want to be able to apply gold paint that stands out from the yellow. In order to assign a different material to an object that already has material properties, we will create a sub-object. To do this, we'll hold Shift and Command at the same time and draw a box around the surfaces that we want to create as a sub-object. I'll now create the gold material. From the material library, I'll go into Metal, Burnished, and use yellow gold. By right-clicking on the material, we can assign it to the selected objects. Assign to objects and our lettering has been selected by creating that sub-object. The object remains closed and can be output as a printed object, but can also carry two different material values. In this particular example, we can see that we have areas that we would like to remain painted, so we'll have to create other sub-objects within. I'll deselect, holding Shift and Command at the same time. 
I'll go in and select the top surfaces that I would like yellow. Right-click the yellow paint and assign to objects. Hit Escape to unselect, and I'll move the full object into view. With the zoom window, I'll start moving over and working on the sharp end of the pencil. The wooden area will be a sub-object. Hold Shift-Command, select that area. In the materials, we'll add from the material library. Under wood, we'll find a red cedar. Right click and assign to the selected surface. We can see here that the wood has been mapped onto the surface, but it's not the result that we want and we may have to go in and adjust how the texture has been mapped on the surface. Select the wood color. Just below we can look at the settings for that material. In particular we're looking at the texture. I'll select the image associated with that texture and we'll make adjustments to how it is mapped. We can play with the size with these ratios locked. I'll try adjusting this down to a lower value. I'll set both at 10. We're now starting to see the grain of the wood. I may bump that up a little bit to make it more visible. We can also choose between different mapping styles. You can play around with these. This is something that you can go a lot further with to get very specific results. For now, we'll just try a few different options. If your texture happens to be mapped the opposite way, you can always rotate the image 90 degrees to give you a different effect. Mine was mapped correctly in the first place, so I'll go back. Finally, I'll create another custom material for the pencil lead. I'll assign a color value, and I'll add some reflectivity to make it look a little bit more realistic. we can drag and drop onto the lead of the pencil. Another little trick that we can do using the sub-objects, holding Shift and Command at the same time, we can select part of the model, adjust it without losing the closed solid geometry of the model. This is something that you have to use carefully. If done wrong, you can break the model and create different openings. Position the object however you would like it to be displayed for render. One other adjustment to make the image look more realistic, under the Object Properties, select an object, we'll look at the edge softening. This will give a similar effect to a filleted edge, except in this case it doesn't change the model itself. By turning it on, it softens some of these sharp edges and looks more natural. I have the edge softening set to 0.1. We can see how that appears. And if needed, we can also adjust that further. In this case, I'm going to go a little bit smaller to 0 0.06. And we can see a very, very slight rounded edge that also catches some of the light and makes it look more realistic. The final thing that we're going to look at under the render menu, we'll look at the environment editor. We have one set, but we can also go in and choose from others within the library. 
The new package of render content is pretty extensive and you have all kinds of different environments to choose from. For this one I'm going to use this office. Once it's in place you also do have to assign it. By right clicking I'll set this as the environment. We can also adjust it for the skylighting and the reflectivity. And we start to see some of those reflections and the lighting effects within the object. Under these panels, remember, you can switch between materials, environments, even some of the render content so that you can go back and forth more easily. The final thing will be to output as an image. This has applied materials to your object, but the final step of the rendering is to create an image. We can do this a few different ways. Adjust your render properties. We can go to a higher quality. I'm going to keep mine fairly low for now so it goes quicker. We can adjust the resolution. Make sure you're using something large enough that it won't end up pixelated. For print, you'll want to go even higher. Once everything has been set, we can click on the render command. Depending on your settings, the rendering process may take minutes and sometimes hours. Once the rendering has completed, we can then save it as an image file. Another option that may give you a different quality is to use the ray traced rendered version. We can now render this viewport by using the command view capture to file. Within the command, we can set the options here. We need to use the viewport, adjust the ratio and resolution, the number of passes, and all. Again, this may take a while depending on your settings. We can then save this image to our file folder.